okay sounds good so now since since now since this idea is understood let's learn of an other concept called as unit vectors okay very interesting concept let's learn of a concept called as unit vectors okay so very simple concept nothing very fancy here okay first let's understand it geometrically then we'll also understand it mathematically okay suppose i have suppose i'm operating in a 2d space okay in a 2d space again you might have encountered this in physics you might have already encountered this in physics so what people say in physics is this so a vector a vector so unit vectors in physics are often represented as i hat and j hat okay so i hat is this vector i hat is this vector which is in the direction of the x axis and j hat and j hat is this vector which is there in the direction of the y axis such that such that the length of this vector the length of this vector equals to 1 and the length of the j vector is also equal to 1 and in other words the array representation right the array representation or the numeric representation the computer science representation of this i is 1 0 and j is 0 1 look at this what is the length of this vector 1 square plus 0 square under root which is 1 and it is it is of length one on the x axis it has no length on the y axis similarly this unit vector j does not have anything on the x axis it is only one unit long on the y axis and the length of this equals to one so these are called as unit vectors okay so these are also called as again we'll learn about what basis vectors and all that stuff mean they're also referred to as standard basis they're often referred again we'll learn what basis is in a little while okay so these are called the standard basis unit vectors okay because again let's let's see why this is a powerful concept okay so you might say why the heck should i care about these vectors there's a very interesting idea so if you give me any vector let's assume i have a vector a which is 2 3 i can represent this vector look at this i can represent any vector in this 2d space okay imagine i have a vector like this i have a vector a okay which is 2 3 Okay, now I can represent this vector as 2 times i plus 3 times j. Why is it so? Because 2 times 1 into 0 plus 3 times 0 into 1. Here what do we have? We have multiplication of a vector by a scalar, multiplication of a vector by a scalar and adding two vectors. If I add everything, I get 2, 3. Okay, so I can represent any vector in my 2D space. A vector could be like this, a vector could be here, a vector could be here. A vector could be here, a vector could be here, pointing in this direction. Vector could be here, vector could be here, anywhere in this 2D space. Every vector in this 2D space can be represented using this representation. Wherein, I will just add some, I will just add some value A1 times I plus A2 times, sorry, A2 times J. A2 times J. Okay. So, I can represent any vector in this 2D space, any vector in this 2D space, I can represent them using a combination. Okay, so here this is called the linear combination again. So, this, this form of writing is called the linear combination. Okay, wherein, I am see, remember, i hat is a vector, j hat is also a vector, but these are special vectors called the standard basis unit vectors. Now, any vector in this space, can be represented using two scalars a1 a2 remember these are numbers okay any vector in this space can be represented as a linear combination why is it called a linear combination because i have two vectors here which i am combining by multiplying them with some scalars okay this way of this representation where i have two vectors each vector i represent by a each vector i represent by a scalar and then i add them up this operation is called as a linear combination of two vectors okay very interesting concept okay so again we'll see why linear combination is an important concept okay i just wanted to define it here now this is called the basis because remember this is this whole thing is called the basis because uh, i and j so we say that i and j form the basis of this 2d space because given any vector given any vector any vector in my 2d space any vector in my 2d space can be represented can be represented any vector can be represented using just these two vectors and linear comp 
represented using linear combinations using linear combinations of these two vectors i hat and j hat that's why they they're said to form the basis okay they're said to form the basis and these are called standard basis this there are non standard basis vectors also i'll explain you that in a little while okay because any vector in this 2d space can be represented using just these two extremely simple unit vectors they are said to be the basis vectors for example now let's take a slightly more interesting example imagine i have my 2d coordinate system x and y here okay so let's assume i have two vectors now okay let me change the colors let's assume this is my vector a and let's assume this is my vector b okay now if you notice any other vector so let's assume my vector c is here okay these two vectors also form the basis vector a and vector b are also are also basis vectors you can think of them as they also form a basis they also form a basis because i can represent any other vector in this space as sum of vector a and vector b look at this if i want to represent this right i can write it as minus some constant times minus see i have to represent them as linear combination right so i have so if i have these two vectors i should be able to write them as x into a a bar plus y into b bar okay where x and y are scalars or numbers i can represent you can, you can try this you can represent any point or any vector in this 2d space as a linear combination of these two vectors okay so a and b here again they need not be perpendicular i am not saying that they got to be i'm not saying anything any two vectors like this if you take linear combinations if you take linear combinations of them you can obtain every other vector in this 2d space and hence these two vectors also form a basis except that this basis ij is called the standard basis okay this is one of the basis that is often used and it's a standardized basis because when i don't mention anything my standard basis says that the two vectors that i care about are 0 1 and 1 0 okay very simple now any two vectors like this can form a basis there are exceptions to the rule for example let's take an example which do not form the basis vectors for example uh, imagine i have two vectors like this okay suppose imagine i have two vectors x and y are my coordinate systems let's assume i have a vector like this okay let's assume this is my vector a okay and let's assume my vector b let's assume my vector b okay let me change the color here let's assume my vector b is like this okay so vector a and vector b are 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 literally pointing in the same direction now now look at this i can represent every point on this line using a and b i can just scale a or b and get every point on this line right but can i get a point here using these two using any linear combination can i say x a bar plus y b bar equals to let's say this is c bar okay i cannot i cannot get using this vectors a and b because they are pointing in the same direction okay because they are pointing in the same direction i cannot obtain remember this is because my b vector is some constant times is some constant times a vector because of this because of this i cannot represent every vector in this 2d space using a and b i can represent every vector on this line but not in this 2d space hence a and b are do not form the basis vectors for the whole 2d space that we have okay it's a very very important thing okay N number one there's an other case where everything will fail again the mathematician's way of thinking here okay if vector a equals to zero vector and vector b equals to zero vector okay both of them are zero vectors okay which means both of them are vectors of zero length which are at origin now can you represent a vector c like this can you represent a vector c like this using linear combinations of a and b you can't right so if you have two vectors a and b such that both of them are zero they do not form the basis or if you have two vectors a and b such that b is some constant times vector a they do not form the basis for your 2d space except these two cases every other pair of vert sorry every other pair of vectors will form a will form a basis okay and the standard basis itself is i and j okay this is very very important now there's a concept called as a span 
okay there is a concept called as span so since we understood linear combination since we understood all of this span basically means this now i'll say because vector i and vector j together using linear combinations can represent any other vector in this space i say that the span of okay i say that the span of these vectors i and j is this whole 2d space span basically means what all what all can, can these two vectors using line, linear combinations span this whole space okay so the span of vector i and vector j is the whole 2d space itself similarly the span of this vector a and b okay the span of these two vectors is also the whole space of 2d space that we have here now the span of vector a and vector b here what is the span the span of this vector a and vector b is all the points that are there in this line but not all the points that are there in the 2d space right so the span of these two vectors the span of these two vectors is all the vectors that are there on this line right again this terminology is very important they help you explain a concept very cleanly and simply that's why we learn terminology that's why we learn english right any language that we learn why do we learn different words in a language because they help us communicate great ideas very beautifully using language similarly these terms are important in mathematics right similarly if you have two vectors a and b both of which are zero vectors what is the span of this the span of these two vectors is the zero vector itself they do not span anything the span of these two vectors is just the origin nothing else okay so the term span is also very very important concept okay having said this now how do we understand this in 3d space we have seen everything in 2d space what about 3d space okay if you have two vectors if you have two vectors in 3d space right if you have two vectors in 3d space what do they span what is the span what is the span of two vectors in 3d space for that i'll take you through a very simple diagram very beautiful diagram from uh, from uh, three blue one brown right look at this diagram so i have these two vectors these are, again this is 3d space okay remember that this is 3d space okay let me just okay so look at this i think you have understood that this is 3d space right so let me go ahead okay let me show you some again you can play this animation itself it's a beautifully done animation but i want to pause at one place and show you okay let me just pause it at one place and show you okay so these are two vectors okay so what it says here is if you have these two vectors let's assume i have this vector and this vector the two vectors in a 3d space remember that this is a 3d space this is your x axis this is your y axis and this is your z axis two vectors in a 3d space span a plane or a sheet okay so this is very important again i would recommend that you check out this check out this animation here right i strongly recommend that you check out look at this so as you change this it's actually spanning so these two vectors span a sheet or a plane okay so the span of two vectors in 3d space again there are exceptions if both the vectors are zero vectors their span is going to be zero right if both the vectors are in the same direction like this where one vector can be represented as a constant times the second vector so i'm avoiding these two cases if they're not if they're like this right if they're like this the span of two vectors in 3d space is a plane or a sheet okay similarly the span of three vectors again the concept of span is important the span of three vectors in 3d space is the 3d space itself except for these boundary cases except for these two types of boundary cases right general in general span of three vectors in 3d space is the 3d space itself okay very very important concept here okay again we'll learn about some concepts we'll try and quantify these two cases using a concept called as linear dependence okay we'll just go there you give it a second we'll surely go there okay now now comes now comes the fun part okay again i i'll provide you links to these videos and these animations they're brilliant i strongly recommend you check them out okay so now now there is a concept called as linear dependence okay there is a concept called as linear dependence actually before going to linear dependence i wanted to explain you one more concept okay so in 3d what happens here is you have x axis y axis and z axis right this is your x axis this is your y axis and this is your z axis this also has a standard basis this also has a standard basis unit vectors 
right? They also have a standard basis unit vectors and they're typically represented as I hat in the x-axis, J hat on the y-axis and the K hat in the z-axis, okay? So how is I hat represented now? I hat is one zero zero because these are 3D points, right? I hat is a 3D vector. Similarly, J hat is zero one zero, right? K hat is zero zero one. Okay, if you notice the length of all these three vectors equals to one and this vector only has X component, this vector only has Y component, this vector has only Z component. Okay, just wanted to bring that up to you, right? Now, if you look at any two points, look at this. If you look at any two, sorry, any two basis vectors here, let's look at this basis vector I and J. I said the span of two vectors, except in the boundary cases, is a plane or sheet. So if you think about it, this X axis and Y axis, they form a sheet like this. They form a sheet like this. This sheet is nothing but your screen itself. The sheet is your screen itself. Assuming that this Z, Z direction is coming out of your screen. Okay. So this, the span of these two vectors, I and J, the span of these two vectors, I and J in this 3D space, is the space of all the 2D points that are there in, the, in this plane. Okay. Till infinity. Till infinity. Right. Till infinity, the whole, all the points that are there, in this 2D space, that is like your monitor screen that you're watching this video on, right? Coming out of the monitor screen is the Z axis. Okay, just wanted to bring that point for clarity. Next, there is a concept called as linear dependence, which will help us handle these two cases. Remember, there are these two cases, right? So we can represent these two cases mathematically using a concept called as linear dependence. Imagine if I have vectors A, B and C. Okay, any number of vectors for that matter. Okay. Now, if A can be represented using some constant times B or some scalar times B and another scalar times C, then if, if A can be represented as this, then, right, then A is said to be, A is said to be linearly dependent. A is said to be linearly dependent on vectors B and C. Okay, this is a very important concept. Okay. Now, okay, now, now look at this. Now, if you have these two vectors A and B, are they linearly dependent? Yes, because I can represent vector B as some constant, some scalar times vector A. Again, the same thing, if you have to write it, instead of three vectors, if I have to write it as two vectors, this is going to be some constant times B, right? This is, this is how two vectors are linearly dependent. This is how three vectors are linearly dependent. Similarly, I can write four vectors to be linearly dependent. If A1 equals to X1, A2, sorry, X2, A2 plus X3, A3 plus X4, A4, then, then A1 is linearly dependent on X, A2, A3, A4. Okay, that's what linear dependence basically means. Okay, having said that, now since A and B are linearly dependent, look at this, since A and B are linearly dependent, see, remember that A and B are 2D vectors. They are 2D vectors, but they are linearly dependent because I can represent one as scalar times the other. Hence, they do not, hence they, they do not span the whole 2D space. Similarly, if A is 0 and B is 0, right, if both of them are 0 vectors, then what happens then? Then A equals to B. A equals to 1 into 1 multiplied by B, which means A and B are also linearly dependent on one another. Hence, if you have linearly dependent vectors, if you have two vectors, let's say A and B in 2D, and if they both are linearly dependent, then they cannot span the whole 2D space. Okay, that's that that's 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 how we connect all these concepts. Okay, so what does it say? What it what what it says here is, if you have two vectors, let's say A and B in 2D, and if A is A and B are linearly dependent, are linearly dependent on one another then if they are dependent then they cannot span then they cannot span then they cannot span the whole 2d space okay otherwise if they are linearly independent else if they are linearly independent if they are linearly independent things that are not linearly dependent are said to be linear independent then they span then they span the whole 2D space in which they are in. Okay, I hope this concept or this relationship between linear dependence and span is clear now. Okay, now 
see i handled both these boundary cases right this case where a is represented as a constant times b and where a and b are both zeros i've handled both these cases where vectors a and b do not form a basis i've handled both of them using the concept of linear dependence okay i i hope i hope i hope you understood this right so now another thing another way of thinking about it here is if let's say uh, let's say i have two vectors a and b okay let's assume i have two vectors a and b okay that span that span some space that span a space that span a d dimensional space it could be 2d 3d whatever okay let's assume it's they span a 2d space let's say just for simplicity okay or let's say they span a one dimensional space okay some n dimensional space okay or some d dimensional space by adding another vector to this combination say i've added vector c if the span does not increase if the span does not increase if the span does not increase then if the span does not increase by adding an additional vector then then this additional vector that you added is linearly dependent is linearly dependent on vectors a and b or in other words you can write this vector c as x times a plus y times b this is an other way to think about span and uh, span and linear dependence right if you have two vectors that span some space some space they, they span it could be one dimensional or d dimensional any dimensional space let's assume they span some d dimensional space a set of vectors let's assume a set of vectors let's assume a set of vectors span a d dimensional space by adding one more vector to this set if the span does not increase by one dimension if the span does not increase to d plus one dimensions then c is said to be linearly dependent on a and b this is an other way to define and connect span and linear dependence okay i hope i hope you got this okay now we have seen about the basis vectors right so we have seen about the basis vectors now we can connect the concept of basis vectors to linear dependence and everything so i can say basis vectors are a set of basis vectors are a set of linearly independent vectors okay basis vectors are linearly a set of linearly independent vectors that span that span the full space of the the full the full d dimensional space in which these vectors lie okay so this is another way to connect basis the concept of linear dependence and the concept of span okay now if you think about the standard basis i and j they are the standard basis right they are linearly independent you can't write 1 0 as some constant times 0 1 you can't write it you whatever constant you choose here you can't equate both of them hence your vector unit vector i and unit vector j are linearly independent and they span the full space of 2d space if i and j are the only two vectors if you are operating in 2d space they span the full 2d space and hence they are basis right i hope i hope this relationship between basis vectors linear independence and span is also clear from this video again all these are terms okay I try to connect all of these concepts through diagrams and through some reasoning i hope i hope you understood some of these concepts from a geometric perspective in addition to the numerical perspective now 